Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing part one of what I hope will be a very exciting series on my channel. If you saw my home tour video that I shared a few weeks ago, then you would have seen that there is a space underneath our house that I have big plans to turn into my sewing space. It is definitely going to be a lot of work and it's a very big project, bigger than anything I've ever tried to undertake before in my life. But I am so excited to have a space that is outside of my actual house that I can have as my rosary apparel studio. It's just going to be so much better for my work-life balance. And even though the space looks less than desirable at the moment. I still think this space has so much potential. So I've actually been working away in that space for the last couple of weeks. And then I realized I never actually filmed an intro to this video. So that is what I'm doing now. And I've actually put together a little mood board, um, which I'm gonna talk you through in a minute. But before I do that, I think it's best if I just take you down into the space before I started working on it and pop in some before shots now so you can see what I'm actually dealing with. <laughs> Okay, this is the space currently, and I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit creepy the way it is at the moment. Like, definitely quite a few spiders in here, which I'm not a fan of, but it also does have a lot of potential. It is a really nice long space, so I feel like it's going to fit a lot in, more than my previous sewing space. There'll be room for some nice long, sewing tables hopefully just below the windows and then also room for a nice big cutting table as well and what I really love about this space and the reason I fell in love with it and wanted it as my sewing space is because it has these really cool long windows on the east side of the building which is great because the sun rises in the east which means it's going to get a lot of sunlight and natural lighting during the mornings which is my preferred time to film and Basically my best working hours are during the morning, but I'm not gonna lie. I am extremely overwhelmed by this whole project at the moment. It's at that stage where we've moved in and everything's nice upstairs. And I was really excited about doing up this space when we first moved in. But now that I've lived here for a month or two, I'm just at a loss at where to start. It is such a big project and yeah, I'm definitely intimidated. It's obviously very dirty. It needs a lot of cleaning out. Um, so before I can actually paint it, I need to like scrub everything, get rid of all the dust and dirt. Matt's gonna help me get rid of the cobwebs because I'm terrified of that. Um, and yeah, then I'll start painting, which is going to help me see the potential a lot better, I think. Everything I'll be sharing in this video or this series of videos is going to be phase one of doing up this space. Basically, I just wanna get it to a point where it is a nice place to work down here. I think it's definitely doable in a smaller kind of budget and time frame. But the plan is eventually to do it up like properly, I guess you could say. Um, this wall here is just like a temporary wall. The space underneath the house is actually quite large and I do have plans to like extend the space down here and actually do it up nicely get it all nicely plastered and everything maybe even potentially get a bathroom put down here but that is definitely going to be a phase two of this makeover and which probably won't happen for another couple of years at least so i can actually save up to be able to do a project like that but yeah let's get on with turning this space into an actual sewing studio okay so now that you've seen the space and you can see just how much work is ahead of me let me go through what I have planned to actually do with it. So I've created a little mood board so you can see kind of the look I'm going for in the space. And I've also drawn up a really, really simple floor plan just to kind of show you the layout I have planned for this space as well. I have decided I want to go a very light beige pink as the main color for the walls, but like very typical rosary apparel pink is what I have planned. I think it's going to be just a fun way to add a bit of color to the space, but light enough so that it doesn't make an already pretty dark space even darker. I also wanna go this kind of reddish dark pink as an accent color. I think it would look really cool because I'm not usually drawn to dark colors. And by accent color, I just mean like around the window frames and also some of the furniture, things like that. I could paint this color just as a 
contrast to the super light pink. I'll also of course be making sure that my Rack of Me Made clothing is going to be a huge feature of the space. I actually have planned to build a custom clothes rack that I'm thinking will come off the ceiling of the space and take up all of the back wall. The back wall in the space currently is very like it's just a concrete wall but it's got a lot of cracks in it and a lot of inconsistencies which is fine. I actually really like the texture of the walls down there. I think it is just so different to a perfectly plasterboard wall. But that back wall in particular just has a few too many cracks for my liking. So I'm just thinking if I cover that wall with all of my handmade clothing, I think that could look really cool and also be pretty much the first thing you see as you walk into the space. I also, of course, will have my Ikea shelf with the pink crates that I keep all of the rosary apparel sewing patterns in. I also would love to add, and this is like a dream item, I have fallen in love with mustard made lockers and I think they're so cute. So I want to get one of their like bigger lockers to be the storage for my fabrics. I also have put this rattan light shade on the mood board as well because I really love this lampshade. Like I think it's beautiful and I think it could be really nice in the space. So now let me talk you through this very, very simple floor plan that I've drawn up. So basically down the bottom here is the entrance. Um, and then as you walk into the space, we have these windows, which are pretty much the only light source into the space. So those windows are going to be really important when it comes to filming my tutorials, because I like to film with as much natural light as possible. So I'm thinking of having my sewing tables up along those windows. Potentially one table can be for my sewing machine and the other one can be for my overlocker. Like I said, I am planning on having the clothes rack up along this wall. So it will take up the majority of that wall. I do have this tiny window in the corner as well, which is very random. The window actually extends. So if down the track, I want to extend the space out, I've got a nice big window there to play with. But for now, it's just this tiny little half a window. And I think this space here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I might just put a plant there um, just to add a bit of greenery into the space and at least it can get a little bit of light through that window. Then I have planned to have a nice big cutting table. I actually have a plan for this cutting table. Basically in that space when we moved in, there was a whole heap of old furniture that the previous owner had left, um, basically because they were so big and heavy, she couldn't actually get them out of the space. Um, so we said it was fine to leave them. We have lots of family members that could help us move them. But one of the furniture pieces ended up being this hand, like hand built bar. I'm going to try and put some shots of it in now. I really love it because it's a, a bar height, um, which for a cutting table could work really well because something I didn't love about my last cutting table is it was just a normal table height, which if you're standing and cutting, you're just like hunched over it. And my back would hurt so much by the end of the day. So to have a cutting table that is standing height, I think is going to be way better for my posture and for my back. So that is a plus. As soon as I saw that, that was the first thing I thought. But then also it has all of these compartments on one side with pegboard on the inside of the shelves, which I just think is gonna tie in really nicely to my pegboard that I will hopefully hang up on the wall properly. I have a really lovely big pegboard that I haven't been utilizing to its fullest potential because when I was renting, I couldn't actually physically put it on the wall. So it had to stand on the floor, which meant half the pegboard wasn't even being used. But now I should be able to put it fully on the wall so I can have a heap more storage options and just have that pegboard looking beautiful as well. So the board will go up along this wall here right next to the cutting table and then obviously the shelves in the cutting table are going to be super useful for storage as well like I just think it's going to be such a fun piece of furniture to try and fix up and I'll give it a nice fresh coat of paint and everything it's going to be beautiful next to the cutting table I've just got some storage options so obviously my Ikea shelving unit that I've used for years and then hopefully a cute little locker as well to keep my fabrics in and then I also plan to put a mirror here next to the door to you know take all of my outfit shots in so yeah that is what I have planned for the space currently obviously this is very early days so this might change and I might 
change up the whole layout of where I'll put everything once I've finished painting everything and once I've been in the space for a bit longer and understand how the sunlight works through the space and everything like that. But yeah, I'm very, very excited to get started. I'm in love with how the mood board looks and how the colors all look together and uh, I think it's going to be really fun. So once the cobwebs and rubbish had all been moved and cleared up from the space, it already started to look so much better. And once I had sugar soaped and cleaned all of the walls, it was time to finally start painting. The plan is to start by painting an undercoat or a primer coat onto the walls and the ceiling, which will hopefully make the process of painting the walls a fun color later on a lot quicker and easier. I decided to start with the shiplap wall first and then I moved on to the concrete walls which even though I could start by using the roller I did have to end up hand painting the majority of the walls with a brush to actually paint all of the cracks and the texture properly. This was definitely a very very slow process but luckily I do tend to somewhat enjoy painting and I found it to be a pretty relaxing and super satisfying job. I have, as you can see, painted the walls. Um, it's taken me a good three full days of painting to like paint the undercoat coat of the walls. So quite a bit of time. And now I'm in the process of picking fine colors for the space. I wanted to pop in and just share this moment with you because it's kind of unreal. Out of this huge stack of paint chips that I brought home from Bunnings, to test on the wall to see kind of what color scheme I want to go with. The three colors I've ended up loving the most all have fabric related themes. So at the moment I'm tossing up between unbleached calico quarter and raw cotton half. They're both very similar. The calico one is slightly more pink, which I do love, but I do love just the creaminess of the cotton colors. And then I also am really loving this pink tulle. <laughs> so those are the three colors I'm kind of considering. Yeah, how weird's that? Like these are the colors I'm picking for my sewing space and they just so happen to all be fabric related. Kind of feels like it's meant to be. So today I'm actually going to go and pick up some sample pots of the colors I'm interested in. So I can do a few swatches onto the walls. This pink tulle I'm hoping will be more of an accent color like on the beams in this space and everything um i might even paint the pegboard this color just so it like breaks up the mundaneness of the lighter pink so yeah let's go pick up some paint samples so we can test out these colors and see how they actually look on the wall look how bright it's looking now that it's painted like it's completely different. I'm starting to see the real potential this space is going to have. Like I knew it was here, but actually seeing how light this space gets now that it's painted a lighter color is just such a relief. I cannot begin to tell you. Okay, I'm back. And I'm gonna start with the one I'm most excited to try. So I've got two beigey pinks to test. Um, and I think this is the one I'm going to light more. So let's see how it goes. I really, really like it. Can you see? It's quite dark in here now, so I might try on this wall here too. I love it. I really like that color. Guess we'll test the other one. Okay, so this one's called Calico and it's a lot more pink, which I like as well, but I think I'm gonna like the raw cotton more. Um, also, by the way, this wall, needs a lot of patching up so we're going to be fixing that eventually um 
but I'm impatient. I just want to pick the color already. Uh, so yeah, let me do a little test sample of this one. Okay, can you tell the difference? It's very similar. Um, I think Calico is definitely more traditional rosary apparel pink, um, whereas Cotton is more on the beigey end of the spectrum. These are both the half strength um, tints. I'm thinking maybe if I went the like quarter of that, I'd probably like it a little bit more. It's just a tad too dark. But I have to say, as soon as I put the raw cotton on the wall, I kind of gasped. I love the color of it so much. It's very subtly pink, which I think in a room that is naturally very dark, I want the shade to be as light as possible. And like the fact that it's just a subtle pink, I think works really nicely. I also put a tiny bit here on the windowsill as well, just so I can see it like in the real, natural light how the two colors look i'm gonna have to wait a few days see it in all the different light and i'll update you soon on my decision okay it is currently a very gloomy sunday and my job today is to undercoat the ceiling i reckon this is going to take me longer than a day also, the ceiling has these steel beams. Um, this one here is just randomly being chopped, but I'm guessing it's structural for some reason. Um, so I'm actually gonna undercoat them in white. And I don't know how to treat the like rustiness of them, but I'm just gonna undercoat them really thickly <laughs> and I'm gonna paint them a contrasting darker color. So hopefully the rust doesn't seep through the paint, but even if it does, the color will be dark enough to kind of blend in with the rust anyway. <laughs> oh, I have no idea what I'm doing, but yeah, let's paint this ceiling. So yeah, this is how it's looking currently. What a difference the lighter paint has made. It is just, it's a completely different space now. It's so light. It's definitely light enough for filming, which was my main concern. And now that the undercoat has been painted, it means that I can finally get started on painting it a fun color. Um, still haven't decided what color I'm gonna go with. I think I'm leaning more towards the cotton 
I think I might have said that already in this video, I can't remember. But I do think I will probably go the quarter cotton instead of the half, just so it's that little bit lighter again. But yeah, I'll get a sample and see how the quarter looks because I am just a little bit concerned it's going to be not pink enough, but oh, <laughs> it's been so much work. I am so proud though that I have painted this whole place myself because Matt has been away a lot this month. Otherwise he would have totally helped me, but yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself that I was able to do all of this work on my own. But obviously there is still a lot of work to go. This is very much just the beginning. In particular, I need to sort out what I'm gonna do with the flooring and the like unfinished concrete. My dad actually came and had a look and he's a bricklayer. So I think he's going to do some brickwork just to neaten it off nicely, which I think is a great idea because I love the look of bricks. And there's also some brickwork up along the top near the ceiling so I think it would tie in nicely with that. But yeah, I will probably be sharing all about that process in the next part of this series um, as well as doing up the bar that's going to become my cutting table and what, I, what fixing up these floors. Like there are so many projects with this space and if you have any ideas or suggestions please feel free to leave them in the comments below because I yeah, am very much in the early stages of this process and so any advice would be greatly greatly appreciated but yeah thank you so much for watching this video until the very end and i'll see you in the next one